When I was as young as 14, I started working at various gas stations in my town. My town was small, everyone knew pretty much everyone, so the owners wouldn't care if I came in and helped out with stuff like mopping the floors, stocking the coolers, or even running the register at times, all for a small amount of cash. And this all took place back in the early 90s in Florida. It was maybe 11pm at night, and I was sitting at my usual spot at a table that was set up along the windows of the gas station. I would generally spend most of the nights at that table reading books and periodically getting up to do different chores. Now, uh, being only 14, I obviously wasn't allowed to be the only one running the store at any given time. It would usually be me and a manager, or maybe another employee or two. And this night, it was me and a guy named Jeff. Jeff was one of the part-time managers, and usually when it was only me and him, he would spend most of his time in the back, which basically left me to hold down the store by myself. And this night was no different. I remember sitting at the register when I glanced up. Something had caught my attention that was especially odd. I could see a lady who was walking up our parking lot from the direction of the interstate. Like, there were literally no customer cars in the parking lot. Now, this in itself was weird, as because of where we were located, we would get almost nobody that would walk here, especially not from the direction of the interstate. I mean, the store was practically in the middle of nowhere along a very desolate interstate. Nobody just walks this road. I figured she must have broken down somewhere, and was coming up to fill a gas container, or use the phone to call for a tow truck or something. After around a minute of me watching her, I realized she didn't have a container in her hands. She then came into the store and looked around for a few minutes. The whole situation just felt off. I remember getting a strange and disturbing vibe from her, just from the way she was looking around the store. By this point, Jeff had come out from the back and was standing behind the register with me. He would occasionally do this when customers came in. The lady then walked up to the counter and started telling us a story about how her car had broken down and that she needed a ride to some town I had never heard of before. Jeff promptly responded saying that he was working and that there was no way he could take her as he was the manager and couldn't leave me here alone. And that's when the lady turned to look at me as if to get my response. Before saying anything, I looked back at Jeff who looked at me with a very cold and hard stare subtly shaking his head as if to say no. And that was my assurance that I knew that he knew something was off about this lady. Now, before I could respond, she turned back to Jeff and pointed at me asking if I could take her. Jeff quickly and sternly responded that I was too young to drive and said there was no way we could help her. I obviously didn't argue with Jeff about his response on my behalf, as to be quite honest, this was completely out of character for him. Jeff was normally friendly and even chatty with the customers. And this further supported the fact that Jeff knew something was off about this lady. The lady, now clearly infuriated, cussed us out and left. As she walked back down the parking lot, I kept an eye on her. I noticed she had stopped at the end of the parking lot, right next to the interstate itself. I also noticed she was now on a phone call and waited for maybe two minutes when a car pulled up, stopped right next to her, and let her in as if the car was expecting her. The whole situation was weird, yeah but I never truly realized how much danger I was actually in that night, until a while later. Almost a year passed. It was night, and I was in my bedroom falling asleep as the TV was on in the background. I don't know what channel it was on, possibly some news channel or something, but regardless, something I heard on the TV snapped me wide awake. I sat up to look at the TV, and was greeted with the mugshot of a lady on the screen. As soon as I saw her, I immediately knew, that was the same lady that I had been in the store with almost a year prior, and who tried to lure either me or my manager to drive her into town. I was 100% sure that was the same woman. It turns out the lady was Eileen Warnos, who was later convicted of being a serial murderer with a confirmed seven victims who were all men. Eileen would lure her victims out into the middle of nowhere, and that's where she would shoot them at point blank range. What disturbs me most is how close I was to becoming one of those victims myself. From both the way she acted in the store and what I now know about her, I firmly believe her plans were to kill either me or my manager Jeff that night. To this day, I still have nightmares about what would have happened had we done what she said. This happened to me and my wife back in the summer of 2017. 
we had actually only gotten married a few months prior, and obviously because of the wedding cost, our financial situation wasn't the best. And this made it so that we could only afford a place to live that was super cheap and that would let us pay week to week. But luckily, we were able to find just that in the form of a boarding house in our city. The house was three stories and had four rooms with a shared kitchen and a bathroom for everyone. We moved into one of the rooms on the second floor. Now, obviously with it being a boarding house, we had to share with a few other people. The most noteworthy ones being a young couple named Jim and Jennifer just above us in a room on the third floor. And in the three months we lived there, they were the only neighbors we talked to. They seemed similar to us in both age and interests, but we usually just talked to them in passing, or even sometimes on the front porch, where we were all out having a cigarette. Though, after a few weeks, we would quickly realize that they didn't get along too well. It started off with small things, like hearing them yell at each other for short durations of time, or hearing one of them angrily leave the house in some absurd hour of the night. But the short fights didn't last long. They would get only longer and louder as time went on. Though, that was until one day. My wife and I were watching a movie, and the whole time the usual fights were taking place just above us. But right as the movie ended, we both noticed they abruptly stopped. Don't get me wrong, it was nice to finally have peace and quiet, but it was completely out of character for them. I mean, this never happened. They would almost never just abruptly stop yelling at each other, especially at this point in the night. Though, even still, we both agreed that we should take advantage of the silence and try to go to sleep. And luckily we were able to. But just for me to be woken up in the middle of the night by my wife who was shaking me and looking off toward the side of our bed, I was tired and completely out of it. I didn't know what time it was or why I was being woken up. Out of habit, I turned over to get up. But when I did, I could make out a man standing right next to our bed, hunched over my nightstand going through the drawer. I was in absolute disbelief. After locking eyes, he stood up from his hunch position and proceeded to just stare at me. I sat up on my bed and the guy started backing up slowly. I honestly didn't know if what I was seeing was real or just my imagination, but after turning on our room's lamp, I realized it was our upstairs neighbor Jim, the same one who was always yelling and keeping us up late. I was a little relieved, but still, why was he going through our stuff while we were sleeping? It was completely out of character for him. After calming down for a second, I said, well, What's up, Jim? What are you doing in our room, man? After a few seconds of silence, Jim responded by asking if he could borrow our car, or if we could take him somewhere. My wife, who was now fully awake, screamed at him no, not after he broke into her room at 3 in the morning. She told him that if he didn't leave, she was going to call the cops. And Jim responded to this by full-on sprinting out of the room. But not just the room, the dude full-on ran out the front door and down the street in a seemingly random direction. I looked at my wife, and we both agreed that something was clearly off about the whole situation. We figured at this point we had to go upstairs and check on Jim's wife Jennifer. And so we do. We go upstairs, and the first thing we notice is the door to the room was shut, but it wasn't locked. I told my wife we should probably just leave her alone, but she insisted against it. So I reluctantly knocked and shouted the usual hello. After no response, we slowly turned the doorknob and pushed the door open. What we saw next was straight out of a horror movie. The room looked terrible, as if someone had just gone crazy hitting random areas with an axe. That's when we noticed Jennifer lying on the floor face down. We walked over to her, thinking that Jim had knocked her unconscious. But as we got closer, we realized there was fresh blood staining the carpet underneath her. In complete horror, we called the cops immediately. We explained to them that we believed we had just walked into a murder scene, but that the murderer himself had already left. The police would tell us to leave the room and wait outside until they arrived. And sure enough, they would arrive not even five minutes later. After explaining everything that happened that night, the cops set out a search for Jim. And luckily, they were able to find him around an hour later still running down the street. After further talking with the cops, and they said it looked like Jim was trying to find a gas station so that he could get fuel to help him burn the whole house down with the goal of burning Jennifer's dead body inside. 
This in turn would remove all evidence connecting him to the murder, though uh, Jim would ultimately be convicted with the murder of his own wife. For the next couple of days, both me and my wife couldn't leave the house, as every time we tried, we would be swarmed by different news reporters asking us for an interview. Me and my wife would of course move out as soon as we found the funds to do so, but still, the whole thing was insanely terrifying. I mean, in the middle of the night, we had unknowingly come face to face with a man who had just murdered his own wife, and who was ultimately planning to murder us in the process of destroying the evidence. This happened two years ago, when I was working for a very large carpet cleaning company. It's exactly what you'd expect. I'd spend the whole workday going from house to house completely deep cleaning the residents' carpets with a lot of different tools and machinery. I was 22 and a female. I'm actually pretty sure I was one of the only females working for this company. But at the same time, I really enjoyed it. And if I'm being honest, I was actually really good at the job. So, because of this, I was given a lot of work, and would usually hit between 6 to 8 houses daily driving all across multiple towns. This night, I was working late, as one of the houses I cleaned earlier in the day took way longer than expected, which of course sent me back the rest of the day. I'd say it was around 7pm when I had one house left to do for the day. Though, upon arrival at the given address, I quickly realized it was in the middle of nowhere. And after knocking on the front door, I also realized no one was home. I was annoyed, yeah, but realistically I was the one that was late for the appointment. I decided to wait until someone came home, as I knew I'd get chewed out by my boss if I left without cleaning anything. And luckily, 10 minutes later the resident pulled up next to my van. He was a middle-aged man, balding, wearing dirty shorts and a jacket. He honestly seemed a bit awkward but was apologetic and let me into his house with all my needed equipment. Upon entering, I instantly realized the carpet and just the house in general was already unbelievably clean. I mean, it even smelled like cleaning supplies had just been used. To be honest, it was a little weird. I wasn't used to seeing already clean carpets upon arrival. I was genuinely questioning whether me cleaning them would even make a difference. But regardless, I followed protocol and pulled out my company laptop to calculate how much it was going to cost before starting. Hey, uh, do they keep track of where you are on that thing? His question caught me off guard. That was an immediate red flag. After the initial shock from the question, I replied saying that it did and that my boss knew exactly how long each job should take. In reality, this was a complete lie. The laptop was literally just used to run a program that can calculate how much to charge a customer based on the inputted amount of work. But I felt like I had to lie, as there was definitely something off about this guy. Regardless, I started cleaning. I just figured the quicker I could clean these carpets, and the quicker I could get out of here and call it a day. Fast forward around an hour later, and I was finished. I hastily met up with the guy to explain I was done, and how much he owed me. But before I could, he interrupted me. He asked me if I could also clean his basement carpets, as he forgot to list them when he ordered the service. My heart literally dropped. I just wanted to be done with this and get out of here. But my stupid customer service condition brain couldn't figure out how to get away with saying no. The guy led me to his basement door, opened it, and gave me a hand signal as if to gesture that I was to go down first. I hesitated, but ultimately I did. Once I got to the bottom, I was horrified. The basement looked horrible compared to the rest of the house. Not only was it unfinished with no carpet whatsoever, but there were clearly seven deep freezers lining the walls. In the middle of the room was a lit, low-hanging ceiling light revealing an old television set, VHS tapes scattered all over the floor, and an old recliner facing the TV. Behind the set were two white shelves full of VHS tapes. The whole while I'm looking at the basement, the guy is stood at the top of the steps blocking the doorway with a disturbing smile on his face. I looked up at him and said, Uh, yeah man, let me go get my stuff. With absolutely no intention of cleaning anything, I just wanted to get out of there. I held my breath and began to walk back up the stairs. The whole while, all I could hear was my own heartbeat in my ears. But as I got to about the third stair from the top, the guy was still blocking the door, 
with still that disturbing smile on his face. I stood there for maybe 20 seconds, just looking at the guy, waiting for him to get out of the way. When, I swear, I could hear footsteps in the basement behind me. Out of pure instinct and adrenaline, without even looking back, I charged towards the guy in front of me. Luckily, I was able to break past him, and right as I did, I beelined it out of the front door and into my van parked outside. I was leaving thousands of dollars of cleaning equipment behind. But honestly, in that moment, I didn't care. I legitimately felt like my life was in danger. As I was pulling away, I glanced back at the house one last time, and I saw the same man looking out one of the windows, now with no smile on his face, but rather a cold, hard stare. I thought I could see another person, but I honestly don't know. The whole memory is sort of just a blur. The truth of the matter is that my boss would not have noticed I was missing for at least 24 hours when I didn't show up for my shift the next day. The next morning, I would call my boss, tell him everything, and ultimately quit that very day. As far as I know, they got the police involved, but I try to distance myself from the whole situation, so I really don't know what ended up happening. I suffered PTSD over this experience. That day still haunts me, and to this day, I can't explain what I found in that basement or the sounds of footsteps I thought to have heard behind me, but one thing's for certain. I believe that man, and whoever else was there, had planned to kill me that night for some sick reason or another. This encounter happened back in 2007, when I was 20 years old. I'm a female, and I didn't get my driver's license until January of that year. So now being able to drive myself opened a lot of doors for me. And because of that, I took a lot of solo road trips to my friend's house that was a couple states over. I remember one time specifically, I was driving alone on an interstate on a random day in July on my way to visit my friend for a long weekend. Her parents were away, and we had the house to ourselves and were planning on drinking, hot subbing, and to overall just have a good time. It was a Friday, and I had left a lot later than I wanted to. Like, it was dark at this point. And being a new driver, driving in the dark made me pretty uneasy. After a few hours, I stopped at a gas station to fill up and get some snacks for the last part of my drive. I was heading into the store when a man, maybe in his early 40s, approached me. He was only around 5 feet tall and had on a plain black tee and jeans with dark brown hair. I noticed he had come out of a black pickup truck and only moments ago parked a few spaces away from my car. The guy had a super intense stare that immediately creeped me out. As he caught up to me, he tried starting a conversation by asking if I was from the area, where I was headed, and if I knew of anything fun to do. I quickly replied with no, shaking him off as just another creepy dude. Though, surprisingly, he then invited me to go play mini golf or catch a movie with him. Without even looking at him, I declined his invitation and continued towards the store. Quite honestly, I was shocked he asked me to do something with him. The whole vibe was off, it was pretty uncomfortable and just random. As I was entering the store, I could then hear him yell a stern hey. It was super aggressive and uncalled for, that it even startled a family walking out of the store. Though, I just ignored it and continued inside. Shortly after, I could tell the guy followed me. He was clearly staring at me. So I went to use the bathroom and stayed in the stall for at least 10 minutes texting my friend about the guy. Thankfully, when I came out, I couldn't see him in the store anymore. I then went out to put gas in my car, and was again relieved as his black pickup was nowhere to be seen. Though, to my absolute horror, as I was pulling out of the gas station parking lot, I could hear someone persistently honking their horn. I looked in my rearview mirror and I could clearly see the same black pickup behind me. The guy was now shouting and signaling me to pull over to the side. I of course freaked out, stepped on it and pulled onto the on-ramp back onto the highway. But the guy was following me. I called my friend extremely terrified. I drove really fast, and looking back, I'm lucky I didn't get into an accident. The guy didn't follow me for that long, and I think only after a few exits he was gone. Though even still, the last hours of my drive were extremely tense. I didn't stop for the rest of the trip, and never saw the guy's car again. I remember checking my mirrors constantly the rest of the way. Eventually, I got to my friend's house safely, and we actually had a nice weekend despite the encounter. 
The whole thing was definitely creepy, but over the years, I didn't think too much about it. That was until around six years later, when the memory would once again come fresh in my mind. I was talking with another friend of mine who was big into serial killer documentaries and things like that. I remember at one point I had mentioned my encounter, jokingly suggesting that the man I had met was a serial killer and explained to her my experience. She was fascinated and therefore wanted to google active serial killers in the area of where I experienced it all. But the first guy that came up made my heart drop. It was a man named Adam Leroy Lane. I instantly recognized the guy. There was no doubt in my mind, that was the same guy I had encountered at the gas station that night. Both the time and the area were a match. The man had three convictions. It was two counts of murder and one count of assault. This discovery has haunted me ever since and caused me to be much more cautious in public at night. My heart goes out to the victims of this man and their families. I've been grateful every day since that I didn't become one of them. When I was in my early 20s and fresh out of college, I lived in some pretty sketchy, albeit cheap apartment buildings in the US. Now, something to note is that the walls in my apartment block out almost no sound. And because of this, I would almost always hear my neighbor to the left of me blasting his music. Though, if I'm being honest, it didn't bother me as much as I thought it would. I would just simply play my own music to not hear it as loud. One night, I could tell he had been drinking a lot, simply from the way I could hear him stumbling across his room. I also figured his girlfriend must have been there, as I could hear him practically yelling at her, which unfortunately wasn't all that uncommon. Usually when things get that loud, I try to get away from it all, and seeing as it wasn't that late, I decided to head out for the night with some friends. We went to a few clubs, and overall had a good time. Fast forward to around 1am or so, and my friends were dropping me back off in my apartment. Though, as we were driving into the parking lot, in the distance we could see my neighbor outside crouched down in between some cars and the apartment building. Okay, kinda weird, but I figured it was whatever, as the guy was just generally creepy anyway. My friends were clearly more weirded out than I was. I honestly didn't think much of it and just had them drop me off near the gate entrance, as it would be easier for them to leave the parking lot that way. But as I was walking toward my apartment building, I swear my heart dropped. I noticed my neighbor was now standing perfectly still in one of the bushes that was between two of the apartment buildings. As I got closer, it was clear he thought I didn't see him. To break the tension, I waved at him and mumbled a greeting, as I wasn't just gonna pretend that I couldn't see him. After doing so, he stepped out of the bush and came into the dim street light, not saying a word, but rather just staring at me. Never in my life have I looked into eyes so widened and fully dilated. The whole encounter was disturbing to say the least, but I tried to ignore it and continued into the building. Right as I got to my apartment door, I got inside and went straight to bed. I was exhausted and just wanted to forget everything and go to sleep. Although, all through the night, I could hear thumps and rustling that sounded like furniture moving. The next morning, I woke up to the sound of cops outside banging on my neighbor's door. I was partially relieved to hear them, but that quickly turned to fear of why they were there in the first place. I could hear them take him away in handcuffs, and shortly after, the police started knocking on my door. They asked me when the last time I had talked to or seen him was, and without hesitation, I told the officer everything that had happened the other night. The yelling, the noises, the encounter in the parking lot, and even the rustling sounds all night. But what I was told next will forever haunt me. I was told that my neighbor had brutally murdered his girlfriend that night. They said he dragged her body outside and into a nearby ditch behind the apartment buildings. And that's when I realized that the other night I was looking at a person who had just taken another human being's life. I honestly felt terrible for the woman. To this day, what disturbs me most is how close I was to death, quite literally, and how he could have ambushed me out of insanity, since he was just waiting in the darkness when I walked up. I moved into a different apartment in a better part of town shortly after the occurrence.
I'm a female and 22 years old. I just recently got out of a pretty abusive relationship and honestly I wasn't in the best place mentally because of it. If I'm being real, it was difficult for me to now have to go home each night to an empty apartment with just myself. Anyways, this night my friends had decided to take me to a hockey game to get me out of the house and potentially get my mind off of the breakup. It was a Friday night and we had been consuming a decent amount of alcohol during the progression of the game. In the arena we were attending, there was this bar where you could buy as many drinks as you wanted, within reason of course. And following the game, we decided to head there for a few more before we left. It was a busy night, so especially considering the game was coming to a close, the line was decently long. During the duration of the time I was patiently waiting, I had started to speak with a couple guys right next to me. Shortly into the conversation, one of them spoke up and asked for my phone number. Looking back, I definitely should have said no, but in the state I was in, I gave it to them. After we had finally gotten our drinks, my friends and I decided to call it a night. We parted ways, but instead of calling an Uber and going back to my apartment, I very stupidly decided to text the man I had previously exchanged contact information with. He responded almost right away, saying he'd head over in an Uber and take me back to his place if I wanted. Again, I made a stupid decision and agreed. Eventually he showed up and we were off back to his place. Though, the drive was a good 45 minutes. When we arrived, I quickly realized we were practically in the middle of nowhere. We weren't anywhere close to the city anymore, and as I looked around, I realized no other property was in sight. Quite honestly, without context, I easily would have mistaken his house for an abandoned building. It was that bad. But regardless, being as intoxicated as I was, I quickly disregarded all my suspicion and followed the man to the front door. As we entered, I quickly realized how clean the place looked from the inside. Like, think hospital level clean, even down to the smell. Without even offering, he quickly poured us a glass of seemingly expensive red wine. I thought nothing of it at the time, and from what I remember, he poured it right in front of me and even drank some himself. Though, that was the last memory I had of that night. The next thing I knew, I was in a bedroom with the sun now clearly shining through the window. The noise of a shower running quickly filled my ears. I was groggy and dazed when I woke up, but I slowly began piecing together where I was, who I was with, and just the overall situation I was in. As it came back to me, I realized I needed to leave immediately. I frantically began to search for my cell phone, clothes, and wallet, but it was no use. I couldn't find them. I rushed out of the bedroom in the hopes to just leave unnoticed prior to this man getting out of the shower. But as I was leaving, my heart sank into my stomach. All of the furniture and floors were completely covered with plastic shower curtains, which I distinctly remember not being there prior to me blacking out the night before. I quickly noticed all of my personal belongings were placed neatly on the kitchen counter, alongside a knife that clearly wasn't a kitchen knife, but rather a hunting knife or something like that. My instincts kicked in, and I instantly grabbed my things and ran out the door. I ran for several minutes in a random direction, panicked and full of adrenaline. A good 10 minutes of full on running down the road and I finally stopped to call a friend to pick me up and take me back to my apartment. When I got back, I instantly blocked the guy's number and to this day have never heard anything from him again. Now looking back, I realize I should have contacted the authorities immediately, but for whatever reason I never did. It's clear I was not in the right state of mind at that point in my life. And this eats away at me daily, as I believe at this point it's too late for me to report the man, seeing as I don't even have the slightest recollection of where his house was located, or even his name. The detail that haunts me the most is that the only thing missing of my personal belongings was my ID, and this makes me question what the guy's true intentions were. Though, if I'm being honest with myself, I truly believe that man planned on murdering me that morning. The plastic shower curtains all over the apartment and the knife make it clear to me, but I guess I'm just lucky to have never truly found out.